And now there's just this this desire to travel. But like the big problem is, it's expensive. And then I become the comedian. You know, when I, I, I speak, hell, we got uh, Biden now forced to fly coach on Air Force One. I mean, it's, it's been, uh, at AA meetings, you know, the downers a five dollar uh-huh. cover and two drink minimum. My kids' uh, school lunch uh, program, uh, instead of macaroni and cheese, it's macaroni or cheese. I was just out in Hollywood <laughs> speaking last week. Pimps driving Kias. Mafia families dining at the Olive Garden. Uh. <laughs> Life's third act is a podcast dedicated to helping you get the most out of your retirement. Sponsored by Tucker Allen, attorney CPA Joe Cordell features guests each week to discuss prominent topics for those over 55. Here's attorney CPA Joe Cordell. Welcome to another episode of Life's Third Act. You're going to really enjoy this topic today. I think all of us want to do some travel. I mean, that's much of what life's third act should be about, is opportunities to see the world, things you couldn't do in the first two acts as much. Uh, But the problem runs into having to do with money. How do you afford it? How do you simultaneously quit working, meaning actively generating income, and still be able to afford to travel? Especially in this unstable economy. Inflation, my goodness. It's It's the big puzzle. So we have a guest today who is the answer to that question, the answer to that that seemingly insoluble problem. Uh, do you want to do a proper introduction for our guest? Jill? I would love to. We're so happy to have Chris Klesch here with us today. He's a travel coach and president of Lifetime Leisure Experience. Now, Chris, you've had an interesting career, 31 years in marketing for AT&T. You were also a Broadway conductor, which I think is very cool. And then after that, you started, because of your passion for travel, um, lifetime leisure experiences. So can you tell us how that all unfolded? Yes, I'd be glad to, uh, Jill. I've always had a passion for travel and leisure. I was very blessed as a young child. uh, and growing up with my parents, took me everywhere, six weeks in Europe and all around the United States. And as an athlete, I travel a lot. I love the cultural changes, the season changes, etc. So I know the value of travel and leisure. Strong roots are essential for a healthy tree, especially your family tree. That's why you work hard to take care of your family every day. At Tucker Allen, we know that taking care of your family means planning for the future. Our team provides personalized estate planning to help you protect your family, your legacy, and your future. From wills and trusts to long-term care and estate planning, count on Tucker Allen, personalized estate planning made simple. And especially now, uh, I still believe that uh, after COVID, it's become more important. It's called revenge travel. People need to retreat, relax, renew, rejoice and remember for a lifetime. I always start out by asking, you know, when I'm speaking a question, would you all agree with me that the best things in life aren't the things? Heck, uh, I don't know if you can see it on camera. This is a $30 uh, Costco watch. It's no Rolex, but it tells time. And I still believe that the best things in life, and I think your audience would agree, are your health, that's mental and physical health, your family, your friends, and those precious memories and experiences. Amen. Yeah. And a lot of those memories and experiences, think about it, come from travel and leisure, the family vacation, the girlfriend trips, the college reunions, the business seminars, et cetera, where we get to be with our family, our loved ones, and do different things, whether it's going to museums, going on a cruise, I'm a ski bum playing golf at different course, uh, courses. I'm a Broadway freak, going to Broadway shows, Las Vegas shows, just sitting in Aruba, the beach, scuba diving. Uh, the world opens up to us internationally, going on safaris, etc. So the value of travel is there. And I think currently it's really become relevant, like you said, Jill. Everybody knows the value of travel, especially in our generation, baby boomers. I'm so, I just turned 74. And like I said, I spent 32 years in corporate America. And how did I get into this? I love travel. When I retired, I had a bucket list and I wanted to do it. 
And so I started traveling around the world and I did it. I'm not a Motel 6 guy. I like to go first class and I figured out how to do it uh, without breaking the bank for really pennies on a dollar. And in my corporate career, I was an executive salesperson. I did a lot of presentations. So speaking came natural to me. So people wanted me to start speaking. How do you do this? But you're a magician. How do you travel around the world for basically nothing and do it first class? So I got invited to speak. And then one thing led to another. I became a member of National Speakers Organization. And 18 years ago, I founded my company called Lifetime Leisure Experiences. And ever since, it's in my blood. It's like a drug. I love to travel. I love to help other people out. Working people want to reduce stress. They want to reduce burnout. So now travel has just become people just want to take advantage. Weddings have been postponed, business seminars, association right. meetings. And now there's just this, this desire to travel. But like the big problem is it's expensive. And then I become the comedian. You know, when I, I, I speak, hell, we got uh, Biden now forced to fly coach on Air Force One. I mean, it's, it's been, uh, at AA meetings, you know, the downers a five dollar uh-huh. cover and two drink minimum. My kids uh-huh. school lunch uh-huh. program instead of macaroni and cheese, it's macaroni or cheese. I was just out in Hollywood <laughs> speaking last week. Pimps driving Kias, mafia families dining at the Olive Garden. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, so it, it's people are struggling out there. We all know the problems, but we still want to travel. And you look at Europe before COVID, you know, in Europe, the culture, they usually take four to six weeks of vacation. And it was encouraged by their employees. It was part of their, uh, you know, persona to take vacations, go places. There was, you know, and studies have said reduce stress and reduce burnout. I've read all the studies, the Harvard, the international studies, and it's a proven study that people that do take the family or the typical vacation there is a lot of reduced stress and reduced burnout. But again, what I try to provide audiences such as your audience and the audiences I speak to is really overcoming the problem, how to do it affordably. So uh, that's my passion. I've been doing it for 18 years and I love to help people out. So let's talk about um, some of the ways in which people may consider traveling in a way that they can afford. I assume that more often than not, this would involve taking advantage of group travel typically, or tell me what. Not necessarily. The biggest two aspects in travel expenses are airfares and accommodations. You look at the typical family vacation, girlfriend trips, anything. Uh, I don't pay to fly. I haven't paid for a flight in 18 years, and I'm not married to a flight attendant. (laughs) <laughs> okay huh. or a pilot so uh but a lot of people know they've heard about credit cards and points and miles but every airline is associated with a bank has an associated credit card you look at delta they have two or three credit cards or with american express southwest is with chase bank and what your listeners should know and audiences know Pick the airline that they want to get to their destination. They all have sign-up bonuses for their credit card utilization. So in other words, if you fly like I do, I'm a ski bum. I live in Florida, but I go out to Lake Tahoe a lot and Vail. So the airline that gets me there is American Airlines. And to give you an example, there's actually a credit card out there with American Airlines. Again, these are the inside secrets I provide. You're not going to find this on a in a book, these are inside secrets, call them loopholes, travel, you know, hacks. You could apply and get an American Airlines credit card for Barclay Bank and buy a cup of coffee or a pack of gum, one purchase, and get 60,000 American Airline miles. That's enough to go round trip to Europe, Hawaii, or whatever. That's $1,500 worth airfare. So it's all possible. So the big Leveraging is you figure you could get a credit card in your name, your spouse's name, like I do. If you're an entrepreneur like myself, or if you have a business, get a business credit card, and the miles add up. And I do, I've done it on five airlines, and uh, it continues to work. That's impressive. 
Yeah. yeah, I didn't realize that. It makes sense. So it's simply applying for a credit card. Yeah, with this particular airlines. Now, some of them, like, they change them. There's all sorts of blogs. I read all the blogs. I'm a junkie, you know, the travel blogs. They change the requirements. I mean, uh, they have different promotions. American Express with Delta, I think, if you spent uh, $2,000 on your credit card within three months. And again, it's a little ingenuity. I put my uh, homeowner's insurance on the credit card. I put my auto insurance, so that seats up to two thousand dollar minimum or any major expense, and you're you're flying for free on Delta. So what about accommodations? Yeah, here's the accommodations is the second biggest factor. Mm -hmm. Hotels, resorts. Yes, again, we're on credit cards. There's credit cards out there for every major hotel chain. So, but also obviously you still have the uh, Hyatt people. You have the Hilton people, et cetera, and they have individual credit cards. You spend a minimum two or three thousand dollars on the credit card, and they're going to give you one hundred and ten thousand loyalty points. And it's just like the airlines; you leverage this one in your name, one if you're an entrepreneur like myself, or your maybe other listeners, one in your business name, one in your spouse's name. You could accumulate enough points to stay in these hotels for free. And they also give you loyalty credits. For instance, I'm with Marriott Bonvoy. I have suite upgrades in every place I go. I get the concierge lounge, a late checkout at four o'clock. So pick one hotel chain and Marriott runs the gamut from the Ritz-Carlton down to you know the courtyard. So you could stay wherever you want around the world. But what I recommend, here's the big tip. What people, here's, again, I provide unique advantage. I tell people in my seminars and my speeches, repeat after Coach Critch, mm -hmm. the typical family vacation, forget the word hotel. I repeat, forget staying at hotels or resorts. Why? They're expensive. They, but they also have vacation clubs, or they used to call them timeshare products. And you could go on the internet now. I'll give one uh, resource. It's redweek.com and rent a timeshare from an owner now. Not from the company, not from Marriott Hilton Hyatt. From the actual owner, right. Yeah, right. And stay in, not in a hotel room now, a one, a studio, a one-bedroom unit, a two-bedroom unit. Some have three-bedroom units. And most of these resorts have full resort amenities. I'll use myself as an example. Like I mentioned before, I'm a skier. I'm a ski bum. I've been doing this for, you know, 20 years since I retired. I love skiing and I like to go first class. In Vail, Colorado, in ski season, the typical hotel room in February goes for over 2,000 a night. 2,000 a That's right. The Vail Marriott's 2,000 a night. If you want the Ritz-Carlton across the street, it's 5500 a night where you could go on the internet. And this is for a nice hotel room. Don't get me wrong. Beautiful, you know, amenities. But you could rent a half mile down the road from an owner like I do. I don't rent. I own. But I'm just saying, if you didn't own a, a timeshare, they call them Vail Streamside Resort, and get, let's say, a one-bedroom unit with a full kitchen, washer, dryer, fireplace, balcony, right? Clubhouse with indoor, outdoor pool, sauna, whirlpool, steam room, the whole bit, transportation, a ski slope, and pay less than 200 a night. So one-tenth of the cost, you're going to get triple the space, triple the amenities for a tenth the cost of a hotel room. You should only buy a timeshare on resale, never from the developer. You, you, you pay an exorbitant fee. But now with prices going up for maintenance, you're better off looking on the internet. And there's two websites I recommend. One is redweek.com. The other one is timeshare users group, TUG. I think it's dot two. You could Google it. It's timeshare users group. These are where most timeshares owners are trying to recoup their maintenance fees that are going up. They're elderly, they can't travel, or they're sick. Right. And they put their units on at a discounted, very discounted rate. One, two, three-bedroom suites. And they're going to have full resort amenities. 
for eight people for less than 2,500 a week, no tax. People don't know they can do this. Whereas a regular hotel rate, I'll say a Western on, on Hilton Head, would be four or $500 a night. This is all possible. But this is, again, one of the insider tips from Coach Chris here. Why stay in a hotel or a resort? Let, let me ask you about what do you think about uh, cruises as a way to travel? Yeah, I'm not a cruise guru, but one, I get that asked question a lot. I don't consider myself a cruise expert, but an excellent resource for your listeners, your audience to go to. I found there's a newsletter out there called vacations to go.com. I think it's a weekly newsletter. Subscribe to it. And they have fantastic cruise deals up to 80% off, 90% off. And I've been told by people that do do a lot of cruising, again, I'm not the expert on cruising, but they have found that a valuable resource to check, you know, into and, and cruises. So there's, there's something for everybody out there. And the people that like international travel, again, the, these vacation clubs are all over Europe, Spain, Paris, London. Again, between the airfares and utilizing timeshares or vacation clubs for your accommodations for the typical family trip, that's going to save you a heck of a lot of money. Yeah. Coach Chris, I have to ask you, since you have traveled around the world, what are some of your top travel destinations, your favorites? Well, I'm a ski bum. I really like skiing areas. I've been very... Yeah, you mentioned Vail. Yeah, I skied in Vail and Park City. But what about abroad, would you say? I've skied all the... I used to be a competitive skier, so I've done all the men's downhill courses in Austria, Switzerland. I've been to Europe. Uh, I've been on an African safari. Uh, I'm a sports addict, so I went to the President's Cup in golf, and it was in South Africa. I've been into London to see shows there, Wimbledon. So I've, you know, I've been to uh, Australia uh, just once. But you know, I, I right now as I get older, I, you know, I, at my age, I've been around the world. You know, you get your favorite destinations, but people in your audience's age group, this our demographic, you know, baby boomers, et cetera, they, they retire. They all have a bucket list. I say, you know, dream for a moment, but remember for a lifetime. Another one of my sound bites. And again, it's all about memories and experiences. And, you know, it's so important for families to take these vacations together. And I, that's one reason I love skiing. I ski, and I, uh, when I get up on top of the gondola, I can't tell you how many videos I have of these five-year-olds in their ski outfits with their ski instructors <laughs> getting ready to go out there. And you think about it, you could have three or four generations of a family out there on a ski slope enjoying the outdoors and national parks. So, You know, Chris, I love one of your sayings, and you have several of them, but this one in particular, we travel not to escape life for life not to escape us. That really is so profound. Yeah, well, I think, you know, that's perfect. I think that's true for me and a lot of people. When I look back on their memories, it's all about those precious family friends, memories, and experiences. I know over COVID, I don't know how many hours I spent just looking over my iPhone here on all these places I have been to, because it's memories and experiences. Like I said, it's not the material things. And it's true. If we get, we travel not to escape life, not just to sit on the beach and have our little margarita or whatever, but to learn different cultures, learn about different people, try different activities, whether it's going to the museums or going on river cruises or whatever it is, going to Broadway shows or taking the, obviously, Disney's popular, taking your family, your grandchildren to the Disney parks, etc. It becomes such an important foundation of family memories and experiences. It's basically you're building this legacy for your family, for these precious memories and experiences. And now with social media, those memories and experience could be shared with the, the whole universe over uh, whether it's Facebook or, yeah, or Twitter. Is, or, or right. Uh, well, is, uh, is safety sometimes an issue, though, uh, whenever as people age and they travel? Many think, well, gee, what if I'm away and something happens? Or 
if I have some medical emergency. I So some out of fear of that possibility might tend to not travel. What would you say to them? Well, that's another excellent question. I, obviously, after COVID, people were concerned about safety. A lot of timeshares are vacation clubs that are independent. They're not with the hotel chains, but you know, with the hotel chains, you're going to get their safety standards. So I think uh, they should be concerned about safety even after COVID and, uh, you know, research where they're going. And a lot of people should travel, check, especially if they're traveling internationally. International travel is a whole different thing. Check does your insurance cover if you do get sick? What's the hospitalization clause? What are the charges, et cetera? Yeah, I mean, there's more research that has to be going into it to find out the resort destinations, any restrictions, and if you get sick, what insurance covers what, et cetera, et cetera. It's such an important part of life and that money should not be an excuse. Another, another thing, uh, I have a lot of videos I show in my presentations and I interviewed 100 hospice patients. Uh, you know, it's a study that was done and they interview them about, you know, what they regretted in life. And and if the survey came out, they didn't regret, you know, things they did in life. They regretted the things they didn't do, the opportunities they had to live this dream, live the dream, live the memories, live the bucket list. When you have the opportunity now with the Internet yeah. And a few of my tricks to travel and plan in advance. You know, it does take a little time and research to save money. That's and that's a good place, I guess, to wrap up because, um, you know, it 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 is a bottom line that many people regret not using the time that they could to travel, especially as they age. And and there's this period of time which we've talked about on this show when you're still capable of traveling and many people think, well, maybe I'll do it later. And then, of course, you know, later comes. And at that point, there's a good chance that they, it's not an option for them. Yeah, well, like you just said, you summarize what I say in my talks. What am I saying? It's not the years in your life, but the life in those years that matter. So yeah. true. Yeah. So true. And, and where uh, can we find more information about your organization, Lifetime yeah, Leisure well, Experiences? I offer your audience a free cons phone consultation with me because everybody has different travel goals, plans. So you can call me direct. I mean, I have a link, coachchrisspeaks.com, to set up an appointment, but I'll give them my phone number right online. Uh, my phone number, they could call me direct, just mention they heard the show and they just wanted, you know, I'd be glad to point them in the right direction. Yeah. So we don't have time to get it. My number is 561 386 2986. The one other thing is if they send me an email, I do have a free for your audience 99 travel tip ebook covers a lot of issues. I'd be glad to send them. Just send me an email at lifetime leisure at bellsouth.net uh, with their name and email address. And I'd be glad to send them that out to them free. Of and we charge. will we'll post that. Thank we'll post you. that information so they'll be able to find it. So uh, it's a ton of useful information. Uh, we uh, we appreciate your taking time. And again, it's it's Chris Clash. He's a travel coach with president uh, and he's president of Lifetime Leisure Experiences. So I hope that we get a chance to visit again. Uh, it sounds like you stay pretty active. Yeah, I, I try and I love to help people out. It, it's rewarding for me. It's a second career for me. I love to speak and uh, I do comedy clubs too. Well, uh, Coach Chris, it's wonderful talking with you, and I hope we get to talk together again soon. Yeah, it's a pleasure to speak with you. And, uh, you know, last words of advice, like I said, it's it's the best things in life. And I, I, I really live this. Aren't the, the material things? They're your health. That's mental and physical health. Your family, friends, and those precious memories and experiences. And a lot of those memories and experiences do come from travel and leisure. Okay. Uh, with those words, we'll, we'll close. This has been another episode of Life's Third Act. Till next time, take care. You've been listening to Life's Third Act, a podcast for thriving in retirement. Sponsored by Tucker Allen, your estate and elder law advisors. 
Each week, we discuss topics and answer questions to help you better plan for your future. For more information, visit TuckerAllen.com. Subscribe and listen again next week for another edition of Life's Third Act. The choice of a lawyer is an important decision and should not be based solely on advertisements.